Please join me in saying, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What a wonderful blessing it is to come together as God's family here this morning to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Obviously, things are a little different as we're not seeing each other face to face, but it will not in any way diminish our celebration here today. Let us begin this morning with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for your goodness, for your love that was on display for all to see when you went to the cross for us, when you died for us. And now, Lord, you've overcome death, not just for yourself, but for every one of us. We thank you, we praise you, we lift your name on high, and we invite you, Lord, to be present in the midst of our celebration here today. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this point in time, we're going to have our scripture. Uh, we're going to uh, look to uh, a passage of scripture from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning with the first verse. And that will be immediately followed by a special visit this morning from Mary Magdalene. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stopped and looked and saw the linen wrappings laying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon and Peter arrived and went in the side. He also noticed the linen right wrappings laying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up laying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. From until then they still didn't understand the scripture that said Jesus must rise from the dead, and they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head of, and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been laid. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She, returned, she turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken taken him away, tell me where he where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to, to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them. I am sending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then, then she gave them his message. It was quiet when I approached the tomb. Days before, there'd been noise everywhere. Crowds cheering on one street. Crowds screaming angrily on another. But as I approached the tomb, it was just silence. I'd gathered my oils and come to anoint the body. But when I got there, he was gone. Two men approached and asked if they could help me, but I couldn't think. My head was spinning. My heart was racing so fast. And then I turned. And there was a gardener, or at least I thought he was a gardener. I said, do you know what they've done with Jesus' body? It wasn't until he said my name that I knew. It was my Lord. He always said that his sheep would know him, and I did. I dropped to my knees and clung to him. What else could I do? I never wanted to let go. But he said there was work to be done. He wanted me to deliver the message to the other disciples. 
to think I came there to anoint a dead body. And I left knowing that he's alive. He's alive. Who do I say he is? I know who he is. I know that he did what he said he was going to do. He said that he was going to rise and he is risen. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. It's sunny and the entire family has gathered around the TV to watch the final installment of the Bible on the History Channel. Tonight, they will chronicle the trial and the persecution and the death of Jesus. And as the story unfolds, the youngest of the family, little Johnny, he is deeply moved. You see, the crucifixion and the death of Jesus seems so realistic. And tears are, are streaming down his face as they, they take Jesus down from the cross. And, and they lay him in a borrowed tomb. He watches it as the guard is placed outside the tomb. And, and he's still visibly upset. But then all of a sudden, a big smile comes across his face. And he, he bounces up on the arm of the chair. And he says with great excitement and anticipation, now comes the good part. Well, let me tell you, Easter Sunday has come. And there is nothing that can keep us from celebrating this morning. Because now comes the good part. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Can, can you imagine the scene that's taking place this morning as the devil looks on? Right? They might, must look something like this. And Satan done scheming returned down below and stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without bunnies and no chocolate lambs. It came without baskets, new dresses or hands. And he puzzled and puzzled till his puzzle was sore. Then the devil thought of something he hadn't before. What if Easter, he thought, doesn't come from a store? What if Easter, perhaps, means a little bit more? Oh, he tried to keep it from coming. Yes, he tried, but not even a pandemic could keep Jesus Christ in the grave. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You see, for those who know who Jesus is, Easter, it's not about bunnies or, or eggs or peeps or chocolate. It's not about new clothes. It's not even about gathering together in a church building, although all those things are good. They're all wonderful things. But Easter is about a little bit more than that. Okay, it's about a lot more than that. And while Satan, he can take away all the fluff. He can even cause pain and suffering in our lives. But no one can steal our joy from us today. No, not today. Not for those who know who Jesus is. I mean, you think anybody could have stolen Mary Magdalene's joy that first Easter morning? I mean, here we have a woman who had been rescued by Jesus. She, she had been possessed by seven demons when she first met him. And then in a single encounter, Jesus transformed and he freed Mary Magdalene from all of her, her, her torment. He set her free from her daily hell and, and misery. And, and she, she was never the same again. She began to follow Jesus, and, and she was joined by other women as well, which, which frankly, in and of itself, is pretty extraordinary. You see, most rabbis, they would not allow women to follow them as disciples. But Jesus, he invites everyone, everyone to be his follower. Mary Magdalene, she, she must have hung on every word that ever came from his mouth, every promise that he proclaimed. But then, all at once, she had to watch as he was arrested. She was forced to see him ridiculed and, and, and tortured by the very people that he came to save. Finally, she watched as, as his life slowly and painfully drained from his body. The, the one who rescued her and taught her and promised her so much, he was gone. And much as you and I try to retrace his footsteps, the footsteps of our Savior during Holy Week. We try to count the cost of our salvation. I cannot even begin to imagine the depth of Mary's pain. And, and then what? Well, I've got to believe that, that for Mary, that day between the death 
of Jesus Christ and his resurrection must have been the longest day of our life. I mean, think about it for a moment. I mean, try to remember the day that you would describe as the longest day in your life. And by the way, generally speaking, this would imply it's not a good day. I mean, face it, good days, think about it like that. They just fly by. But a bad day, a bad day seems like it's never going to end. Two of the longest days in my life were the days in which my father passed away and my mother passed away. And, and perhaps you can relate as well. And Mary, she had pinned all of her hopes on, on Jesus. And then suddenly, all of her dreams came crashing down as, as she watched Jesus die on the cross. And here's the thing. Neither Mary nor any of, of the disciples of Jesus knew that the good part was coming. They didn't know about Sunday, about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, granted, they should have. He repeatedly told them that he was going to die, but he also told them that three days later he would rise from the dead. They should have known, but they didn't. Simply couldn't wrap their brains around it, this promise that Jesus made to them. I can't even imagine what they must have been thinking, how shattered they all must have been. And so Mary, on that Sunday morning, along with a group of other women, made her way to the tomb, only to discover, with the help of some angels, that the tomb was empty. Now, now my guess is that, that, that for Mary, everything was probably a little bit of a blur the rest of the day, because she hurried off, and, and she told the disciples, she told Peter, and, and Peter and John, they, they rushed to the tomb, and only to find the grave clothes of Jesus left behind, as if he had passed right through them. The scripture says John came in and he saw him, and he believed. He believed then and there in the resurrection of Jesus. He knew who Jesus was. But as for Mary, well, the text says that she was tortured by the thought that someone had come and taken the body of Jesus and until she turned and, and there Jesus stood right before her, but, but she didn't recognize him. And, and, and then he asked her, woman, who, why are you crying? Who, who are you looking for? And the scripture says that she thought he was the gardener. And she responded, Sir, if you've carried him away, just tell me where you put him, and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And then she recognized him. She cried out, Rabboni, teacher. And at that very moment, Mary knew who Jesus was. And I'm pretty sure nothing could have stopped the ensuing celebration that took place for her that day, not a pandemic of biblical proportions. You see, once you know who he is, everything changes. Now, I can stand here today, and I can say that the evidence that Jesus is God, the risen Messiah, is overwhelming. But, but you still have to believe the evidence. Jesus still asks you, that very same question that he asked his disciples 2,000 years ago. Who do you say that I am? I mean, the Bible tells us Jesus rose from the dead. And here's the thing. Pretty much nobody questions that the tomb was empty. Instead, what do they do? They try to explain it away. That's what they do. Uh, more of Satan's lies. More, more in his effort to stop the celebration to keep Easter from coming. For instance, some... Some have come up with the argument that, that the woman, and apparently Peter and John, uh, you know, had, 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 had took a wrong turn at the fork of the road. They, they merely ended up at the wrong tomb. Yet the scripture, the scriptures tell us that Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw the very place that they laid his body on Friday. Now, are we to believe that just three days later they forgot? I don't think so. Now, others will say that the disciples stole the body. Well, there's two significant problems with this. First of all, there were extra guards that, that were summoned to prevent this very thing from happening. Are we to believe that even with these extra armed guards, that the apostles were able to somehow sneak past them and steal the body of Jesus? I mean, really? Secondly, if we were to believe the historian's account, we are then told that all but one of the disciples went to their graves, went to their death. Because why? Because they refused to deny that Christ had risen from the dead. So let me ask you a question. Would you be willing to die for a lie? I don't think so. The disciples are no different than you and I. 
If they had been the ones that had actually stolen the body, had they known Jesus did not rise from the dead, pretty sure they would have recanted. Pretty sure they wouldn't have wanted to die. The Bible goes on to tell us that, that over 500 people saw the risen Christ. And just so you know, this was not discredited in their time. Then comes the most important evidence of all, at least to me. Jesus, both then and still today, transforms lives. He did it for, for Mary Magdalene. He, he did it in the lives of his disciples. That's what enabled him to go forth boldly to present the good news of the resurrection, to share the gospel with the world. You see, just like Mary, the, these disciples, their lives were changed forever. They would never be the same. And here's the thing, Jesus continues to do this today. Let me tell you, if, if 25 years ago, you would have told me that I'd be standing here today preaching the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I would have laughed at you, seriously. And, and, and Denise, she'd been unable to contain herself. You know, back then, my, my, my life, my world was about stuff. I, I, I guess I, I was a nice enough guy. But there's no way I'd get up here 25 years ago. But then one day, I believed, uh, I believed that Jesus had died for me, that he died for my sins, and, and that he had risen from the dead. I, I believed that he rose from the dead. I believed that if I made a decision to be a follower of his, I would rise from the dead also. And I would spend eternity with Jesus. So I asked him into my life. I, I asked him to take over my life. You think my life has changed? I used to be a jewelry salesman. Live it only for today. And now? Well, let's just say, he's transformed me. I'm still a work in progress, but my life has been forever changed. Mary, she would say, she would say, he rescued me. He, he changed my life forever. He saved me. He died for me. And I would say, me too. Amen. We, we heard Mary say this morning that, that it wasn't until he said my name that I recognized it was the Lord. He, he taught us that his sheep would, would know his voice, and I knew it. I knew him the moment he said my name, and, and then I dropped to my knees, and what else could I do but cling to him? I never wanted to let him out of my sight, but no. There was news to deliver, and he wanted me to give that news to the rest of the disciples. To think that I came to anoint a dead man and left with proof that he's alive. Who do I say he is? I know who he is. What matter it is, he did what he said he would. He said he would rise, and he is most certainly risen. He is a savior. He is the one true God. While we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. And hey, nobody can beat death, right? But Jesus, he beat death. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I say, as Mary said, he is the Savior. He is my Savior. He is the one true God. And that's why nothing Satan tries to do can keep me from celebrating today. Yes, it came without bunnies and no chocolate lambs. It came without baskets, new dresses, or hands. And he puzzled and puzzled till his puzzler was sore. Then the devil thought of something he hadn't before. What if Easter, he thought, doesn't come from a store? What if Easter, perhaps, means a little bit more? Not a little bit more. It means a lot more. Today, as, as that little boy said, this is the good part. At least for all those who know who he is. So I ask you this morning, who do you say that he is? Is he calling your name? I sure hope that this would be the day that you would invite him into your life. That you would say, Jesus, I, I've sinned, i messed up. Forgive me. I believe that you are God's one and only son. That you rose from the dead, paying the price for my sin. Come into my life. I invite you into my life. It's that simple. It's a simple prayer if you just pray it. As for the rest of us, just like Mary, we too have work to do. We have news to deliver. 
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. celebration of the Lord's Supper. If you need to, to get your, your drink and your bread and crackers, please just pause your machine at this point in time. I would like you also now to take a few moments to turn to God if there be anything you need to ask Him for forgiveness for, that you would do so now, just silently, quietly in your homes. Take a few moments now. Father, we thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your forgiveness of sins. We thank you that, that when we confess our sins, Lord, you are faithful and just to, to uh, purify us uh, from all unrighteousness, Lord, uh, that you forgive us our sins and make us whole again. And we thank you and praise you for that promise fulfilled through your Son, Jesus Christ. We now remember the words of the institution of the Lord's Supper is recorded by the Apostle Paul. For Paul writes that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he, he took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink from it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again in glory. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. People come from east, from west, from north, and from south to gather around the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, this is my body. That is for you to do this in remembrance of me. Take now and eat.
Jesus said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take now and drink. Let us pray. Father, we are overwhelmed by just how much you loved us. As we entered into this holy ordinance, Lord, we remembered once again that you were willing to die for us. We counted the cost of our salvation, Lord, and, and, and we thank you for this meal of remembrance. We also, Lord, pray that, that this would serve as, as a renewed commitment on our behalf as we drank and as we ate, Lord, that it would once again draw us nearer to you and renew that commitment we made to follow you day by day of word and in deed all the days of our life. Lord, I ask your blessing upon all those who have partaken in this, this precious meal. I ask your blessing upon them in Jesus' name. And now, as those who truly know who Jesus is, as his followers, let us pray together as Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I, I want to thank everyone who was a part of this service, who contributed. Um, I want to thank Jennifer and, and Tabitha, the Garvins. Uh, I want to thank Buzzy. And I want to thank my wife, who was my stage artist, uh, my makeup artist. Uh, she pretty much made this all happen. And so on behalf of uh, her and on behalf of the First Baptist Church of Monroe. I now want to say, have a very blessed and happy Easter. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.